heal KU, which stands for Health, Education, Advocacy, and Leadership. And we're a service and advocacy or student organization here at KU. My name is Amu, and I'm one of the current co-presidents uh, during the school year. And uh, these, this is Yasmin and Ria, and they were going to be the co-presidents next year. So to kind of talk about where Heal KU originated from um, and why we kind of rebranded to begin, we were originally a part of MedLife, which is a national organization that sends college students to different parts of uh, the world and different countries to um, work in these mobile clinics. And so additionally, we thought that this was kind of a violation of ethical service. We weren't really providing long-term impacts to the communities we were serving through these um, mission type trips. So we decided to kind of rebrand um, and through 2016 to 2017, um, we were researching you know, the negative effects of uh, these trips that we were doing. And we submitted a formal proposal to the CEO of MedLife to kind of um, combat these unethical practices. Um, and through 2017 to 2018, we decided to kind of implement more social justice and advocacy into our organization. Um, but officially in 2020, we decided to completely disaffiliate from MedLife um, and create Heal KU, which focuses more on local uh, service opportunities for our uh, KU student body. Um, for that reason, you know, that was able to give us more opportunities to create long-term impacts within our community rather than just short-term um, impacts. And this way is a little bit more sustainable for us also. So yeah, that's kind of why we rebranded um, and why we became Heal KU. Yeah, and just to kind of go through some of the ethical concerns that we had in the past and why that how that informs our um, current mission. Um, so um, in the past, while we were med life, um, we kind of uh, realized that negative impacts of voluntourism and trips that are taken abroad, even you know, with the best of intentions, these can create things like aid dependency, a lack of investment in the local economy, and asymmetrical relationships where people um, from you know, more well-resourced communities are providing aid to people from lower resource communities. Um, and it also actually puts a strain on the local healthcare system and it's very impermanent. As Yasmin mentioned, it's not very sustainable. And so kind of what we wanted to implement is more discussion-based learning about whether it's cultural competency or advocacy issues, um, how to not perpetuate saviorism in the service work that we do, especially because service is such a big part of um, the student experience at KU. And then also um, helping students understand the social and economic circumstances of communities that they are um, want to help, and um, just you know really to recontextualize our role in service, which is that we are addressing basic needs of people, and we're not necessarily saving them from their environment. So that's just kind of those those are the things that we were thinking about as we were rebranding. So in order to encompass all of that, um, our mission is that we at Heal KU are building sustainable relationships with local organizations and advocating for ethical service in order to develop more conscientious, conscientious community members. We strive to foster a culture of advocacy and social justice education at KU. So for our service opportunities, we have a community partnership with the Lawrence Community Shelter. And so the Lawrence Community Shelter offers a safe haven to individuals within the Lawrence community facing homelessness. And so we introduced uh, what LCS is to our volunteers and we offered it as a service opportunity for them throughout the semester and um, the, the spring semester and the fall semester as well. So um, this has been an opportunity throughout our time at TLKU for our volunteers to um, create long-term connections with the people working at LCS and um, to the people that come in. And so this has been a great opportunity for us to kind of build a long-term relationship with a community partner. Throughout the year, we've had multiple opportunities for fundraisers. Um, we started off in March with a social media fundraiser and that money went towards LCS, towards buying them um, PPE as well as other needs that were needed when COVID first um, became a big problem. And then we had um, three other fundraisers throughout the year and we raised a total of $2,000 this year. And um, to kind of touch back on how we incorporate advocacy and social justice topics within our organization, we like, we like to do bi-weekly spotlights on our, on our social media and um, host discussions within our general body meetings, which have been received really well by our Gen Body members and our past topics have been suicide prevention and mental health, voting rights, 
voter information suppression, coronavirus on campus, um, chronic homelessness and how it affects students. And um, a project that we're really looking forward to working more on is about uh, birth control access at KU. And this is, um, we have been in conversation with Watkins Health, um, just shout out to Jenny McKee at Watkins who talked with us um, and is working with us on transparency and things like that with Watkins. So that's a very big part of um, what our plans are for next year. So that concludes our presentation. Um, our Instagram is heal underscore KU. If you want to follow us and learn more about our service opportunities and our meetings, uh, we have our website, healku.card.co, um, and then, you know, our contact information as well. So we hope you all uh, learned a little bit more about Heal KU and are interested in staying in touch with us. So definitely reach out. But yeah, that concludes our presentation.